My first encounter with the lady Nancy Astor was just after I started school in 1935, the summer of 1935 I would say, because I would be playing with my two new school chums, uh, Jeffrey Emmett and uh, Gordon Steele and uh, it was at White Place Farm of course which the Astors were converting into a, a modern type dairy farm and uh, we were playing I, I don't exactly remember what we were doing we were in the barn I think and suddenly through the door came uh, this lady. I didn't know who she was and she said uh, hello Jeffrey, hello Gordon, well aren't you going to introduce me to your friend and uh, they both looked rather timidly and said and pointed at me I remember that He's Jim Hatch <laughs> and uh, she looked at me and said are you the Jim Hatch from Whitbrook Cottage? I think I, I sort of nodded. Hmm I know your grandmother very well. I hope you're not getting into any mischief you boys. With that, she strode off out the other side of the barn to where I could see the herdsman, George Hughes, was uh, talking to uh, one of the dairymen. And so uh, that was my first encounter. Then uh, we uh, had a uh, other encounter, encounters. Uh, and uh, she, uh, it was I think after the war and uh, I was uh, quite a rifle shot and I didn't have a shotgun but I had, uh, had a 22 rifle and uh, she saw me with the rifle uh, in the farm and she says I hope you're not after my pheasants and poaching them, young Hatch. And uh, I said, no, my lady. A matter of fact, my lady, my father's cockerels have got more meat on them than your pheasants will ever have. And she sort of gave me a wry smile because she did like some people to banter with her and uh, a little argue and uh, she says oh your father's got cockerels has he yes as you know he's a butcher oh I see hmm and <laughs> once again she went away and then there was a farmers uh, young farmers uh, rally at the farm and uh, this was uh, in the early part, late 40s, early 50s. And uh, they had a clay pigeon shoot. And I entered, you, you paid half a crown, and uh, I entered. And you had to hit the maximum of uh, five clay birds. Well, I just uh, up, bang, 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 uh, five uh, shots and five birds. Well, there was somebody else that tied with me and we had to shoot it off. And I had another five birds and uh, he had four. So I was the winner. The thing was that there was a gift which, uh, or a prize, which her ladyship was going to... Uh, 
give out at the end of the afternoon. But sadly, I had booked uh, uh, in a coach trip to a theatre in London. So I went up to the farm manager, who uh, was uh, Edward Chaplin, and I said, uh, can you collect my prize for me, uh, and uh, so on, and I'll pick it up uh, from you tomorrow. And uh, he said, oh yeah, sure. And apparently he told me the story that when it came to the clay pigeon shoot, my name came up. Oh dear, that really set the lady off. I bet you he's got experience from shooting my pheasants. <laughs> to which, of course, the, the whole audience uh, came down with laughter. Anyway, uh, and then again, she says, no good's going to come of this. Look what he's won. It was a bottle of uh, Johnny Walker Red Label whiskey. <laughs> anyway, uh, later on, uh, I emigrated to Canada. And when I came back in the sort of middle uh, 1950s, I uh, had a... Uh, chance to meet with her once and this was the last time that we had a meeting uh, was when her son married um, for the second time uh, a, a Philippa Hunlok and Philippa had spent the war years in Ottawa and so uh, she asked me about my thoughts of Canada and North America and then she said all of a sudden, by the way, what happened to that bottle of whiskey you won? And I looked at her and said, my lady, that bottle of whiskey I gave to my parents for use for medicinal purposes only. And she looked at me with a very wry smile and said, my lad, you'll do, you'll do. And with that she walked off into the crowd and I was never to see or speak to her again. My story of one Lady Nancy Astor. <laughs>